So, Suikoden. Um, you've probably heard me mention it a time or two in the past. Oh, thank you, Nick Buntline. Um, Suikoden is one of the series. Is, is series is, it is a series that has influenced my uh, experiences. Like as like a. <sighs> Thank you, Control C. No, so Suikoden, how do I talk about the role that the Suikoden games have had in my life? <sighs> well, first of all, um, it was one of the early RPGs to come out on the PlayStation. Um, I didn't really connect with the Final Fantasies um, that came out on the play. Well, <laughs> how how do I talk about it? I want to like give you like the historical context. Okay, the first RPG that I knew of that came out on the PlayStation was Beyond the Beyond by Camelot, which is not a good game, although it had good music, and I love Camelot. Um, didn't really connect with Final Fantasy VII, um, but Suikoden came out, I think, a little bit before Final Fantasy VII, and it was this completely new thing. Everyone else was doing... Um, in my opinion, really lackluster 3D polygon stuff. Um, and Suikoden was like, what if I was absolutely stunningly gorgeous 2D animation? Um, we're going to go through both of the first two games, which are both um, sprite-based. The second game is an absolute work of art. The first game is older and it shows. Um, but I had no idea what to expect, except that my sister and I loved RPGs. Um, I was less young at this point than when Final Fantasy VI came out. I was young enough that like two years or however long the difference there was between the two it was a really big difference in my like age and maturity level. So Sweet Odin comes out, right? And I don't know what to expect. And Final Fantasy VI I love for its melodrama and tragedy, but it's kind of got this like operatic soap opera over the top thing. The Sweet Odin games? are not like that. Are they tragic? Yes. Are they dramatic? Yes. Are they melodramatic? I would say no. Um, they take things on a much smaller, more human scale and are extremely powerful for it. So when the first Suikoden game came out and my sister and I fell head over heels in love with it, we'd never seen anything quite like it before. We started up a play by post or play by chapter, um, RPG, the, the Suikoden RPG was what we called it, and we gave ourselves personas as, as Lanknot and Windy, who are two very important characters in the story. I was Lanknot and my sister was Windy. For anyone who is familiar with the games and or me and my sister, this is no surprise. Um, but we ran this game, um, and part of the advantage of having like our like owning it personas, like our, our running it personas, and then we had a had ourselves playing as like we wrote as characters as well. And so people knew and hung out with us as the characters we wrote for. Um, but we had that difference, which was kind of good because it meant that we could enforce rules without people hating us. So people hated like not and Wendy, but they didn't hate me and my sister because they didn't know we were the same people. Um, so yeah, that's, and that was a lot of work. It was a lot of effort running that for two kids in like middle and high school. Um, but it was so important to us. And I'd been in this Final Fantasy VI or Final Fantasy game like that before when I was a kid kid. Um, uh, but so, so that was how dedicated I was to this game when it was new. Um, and the sequel as well, like even more so. The backstory of this game is that the guy behind it wanted to make the story that would be like a magnum opus of his. But he and his team didn't know what they were doing in that he didn't feel confident enough in what they knew and their skill level. So he basically made a prequel to it. So final or er, Suikoden 1 is his team learning how to make a game so that they could then make Suikoden 2. And so it does feel that way. One is good. Two is I would say perhaps one of the best game stories, if not the best game story um in any RPG. Um, and, uh, <sighs> this has been on my mind because I was playing through Final Fantasy VI on stream, um, and that wasn't blind, and usually I do blind streams, right? Um, but people seem to have fun with Final Fantasy VI, um, and Suikoden is not as well known. Um, so I was like, you know, everybody should be introduced to these games. I love them dearly. They have been such, like, 
a key part of my life since 1996 or whenever this game came out. Um, and like, I walked, so I'm divorced now, but I walked down the aisle to an arrangement of Locke and Celis' theme from Final Fantasy VI. We walked back after the ceremony to the second half of the opening theme from Sweet Code N2. They're very important to me. They were important to me and my husband, um, I guess ex-husband now. They've been important to me and friends. Um, I have a lot of community. <laughs> um, some of my oldest friends are people that I met through the Suikoden fandom back in the <laughs> mid to late 90s. Um, like even in my last Final Fantasy VI stream last week, we had a friend come by who I knew from one of the Suikoden uh, play by chapter games. Um, Stodelheim Reinbach here. Hello, fellow Suikoden fan. If you guys haven't played the game, that name is a reference. That is very funny. Um, but yeah, so I thought, you know, I should introduce people to the Suikoden games because I love them so much and they are so amazing. And I, in some way, I feel like it's like a crime that more people don't know them. Um, so I wanted to introduce that to people. Um, but then, okay, this is, sorry, we're just going to keep going because you're just going to have to deal with like the whole setup of why we're playing this. Um, there are five Suikoden games plus some side stories, <laughs> but there's five main series games. The first three had the original creator Murayama-san, um, behind them. Um, and then he left partway through or near the end of three. So we don't talk about four. <laughs> five is good. Um... But the series kind of stopped because Konami does not support most of their series, hence Castlevania. Um, uh, what's the other one? Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> so you've seen a number of the creators have kind of jump shipped and gone on to do their own thing. Like Bloodstained was this huge success and by all accounts like is a really good game. I haven't played it because the only Castlevania game that I've played is Symphony of the Night, which was fantastic, but I haven't really felt compelled to do more. Um, I know them quite well because I can, my, my ex-husband was a big fan of the Castlevania, specifically Metroidvania style Castlevanias that came later. Um, but in about, about a month ago, <laughs> almost exactly a month ago, um, word <laughs> spread. <laughs> so I told you I have a lot of friends from this weekend in fandom. I still like have a finger on the pulse of this weekend in fandom. Um, and word spread that there was going to be a Kickstarter game by the original team. What? Um, and I was already planning on streaming Suikoden. Um, but so there was a Kickstarter, which is now, I think, what, the fifth or sixth most funded <laughs> Kickstarter of any video game. Um, which is amazing because Suikoden was always kind of this niche, very dedicated, <laughs> but niche fandom. Um, but apparently because it has some um, strategic elements and things, the Fire Emblem fandom got their hands on the Kickstarter too, which was really amazing. Um, and also just to connect with people um, who love this game as much as I do. Um, yeah. Uh, so to give you an idea of how much I love Suikoden, um, there was a Suikoden 2 concert in Japan in 2018. I flew to Tokyo because of that concert, because I'm friends with the singer of the intro track of Suikoden 2. Um, and she invited me and said she could get me into the concert and backstage. Um, and it was a once in a lifetime experience. It was amazing. I cried the whole time. Everyone was like, wow, <laughs> there's the American girl crying constantly. Um, because it's a, it's a, there's a cultural difference there. Uh, the amount of emotions that I uh, exhibit are a little bit high, even for an American, but for a culture in which people are like a bit more reserved with their emotions. Like, uh, I mean, you guys turn out here to watch me um, have emotions on screen. So it was a, it was fun though. It was an amazing, amazing experience. And we will get to speak it into, so we get in one is much shorter. So we're kind of doing this as though it is. Like, this is the prequel. So we go to two is a prequel, or Sweet Code 1 is a prequel, and this is the prequel stream to Sweet Code 2. Um, but yeah, I love Sweet Code <laughs> And people will criticize my pronunciation of it because it's not correct exactly. I cannot speak Japanese, so I actually can't hear the difference. So you will just have to forgive me. Because <laughs> it's more like Sui. Suikoden, where it's like kind of, sort of more two syllables, but kind of not. So just 
we're going to roll with it, please. Um, so without further ado, we're going to play Suikoden. <laughs> Shuttle Run Bach is here. All right. Hold on. I got to make sure that we are good to go. Oh, my gosh. No. Give me a minute. I had it open. I had it open. I did have it open. And then it... <sighs> All right. Anyway, I think it's such a shame that more people don't know it. And you're going to know it now. So thank you for listening to my big, long ramble. Analog off. We're going to do this old school because it's... One of the early games. Oh man. <laughs> Hopefully this ROM works. I was flipping out. Oh my god, just listen to the music. Just listen to it. It's the water margin. It's named for an old Chinese legend story. Oh my god. moments. Uh, my flute. That's like not <laughs> in the background. That was me. See why I love this? Even at his most powerless, man's existence is never without meaning. Ah! Anyway, it's really good, and I like it. And you know, right from the beginning, that it's going to be an epic experience. Anyway, that's the main theme. Bum 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 bum. Ba -da 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 There's a version of it that I've been wanting to cover with friends for a very long time. No, I hit the start button! Start! Hit the start button! Okay. When was the last time I saw Sweet Good in one? Was it when I introduced my then boyfriend, later husband, to it when I was in college? It's been a while. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, what am I gonna name him? Alright, so my favorite... His, his last name is McDole, which I know, because I know the game. He was one of my favorite... I really liked him. I had a little mini crush on him when I was... Age. Um, he does have some default names. Um, so his last name is McDole. My favorite joke name for him that I ever gave him was McNugget. So he could be McNugget McDole. I'm sorry. <sighs> is that it will mean that his name is correct <laughs> when it is referenced in the second game. <laughs> I'm sorry. There are a few names in my history. Oh my god. Okay, Shuttle on Reinbach, if that is a laughing Kefka, which I think it is, we're gonna be friends. <laughs> um, they just... Final Fantasy VI, I have a band called The Returners. We actually did the chase, the battle with Luca Blight as a band years ago. Um, so, 
When I first played this game, I named him Toby because I really like the name Toby. However, these days you can't name a character Toby the same way as you could because of Toby Fox. <laughs> Oh, that's, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know, Nick. I think it just takes the first letter. I don't think it takes every capitalized one because I swear that I've named him McNugget. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like you name the character in Sweet Code in four bubbles if you have to go through that game. That's the right name for him. Um, no, so, God, what is, I'm blanking on what his, what his, what his uh, fan and canon name is because I know Rio is, the character for two. Because I just call him Mc, I just call him McDole. Tear! Thank you! And then he becomes Tickdole. Thank you, Sam. Oh! Sam! Sam is the friend who's from way back when. I was I was telling people about my history with this week at in fandom here. Uh, I'm glad to know that that Flutie Bot is quoting my novel at me. <laughs> Tear, I can't believe I forgot his name was Tear. Yes, Sam and I both wrote for the same character. I wrote for the Suicoden 1 version in the Suicoden 1 game. And then she wrote for the Suicoden 2 version of the character in the Suicoden 2 game. Yeah, so we can we can name him Tyr. That's his his name. But then he'll be Tiktol. <sighs> That's true. Mine m mine Mine was a vampire. <laughs> ah. <laughs> she was so tragic and dramatic. Oh my god. Uh, Sweet Code in 3 is good. Alright, hold on. Oh, thank you, Chrono. Mine was every bit of melodrama and tragedy that anyone could possibly expect from a teenage Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> so shall we name him Tear? <laughs> shall we name him McNugget? I'm sorry. Uh, what was I'm trying to remember? We actually polled people for what to name him because I actually wrote as him for a while in the game that we ran. All right. His name can be Tear McNugget McDoll. That's his wrestling name. <laughs> Begin with an E, Sam. But uh, were you in the the first one? All right. I've cosplayed him. I have somewhere here in my life a plushie of him. It's probably at my mom's house. I really liked him. I've got some old fan art of him too somewhere. He's got two bandanas, or rather part of one of his bandanas is purple. I'm sorry, I'm gonna like, I do this when I'm really excited sometimes, so expect me to start taking off at any moment. One of the things that I love about this is the moment you come here, you hear this music, this like very like classy, like Baroque music. And if you look like, you know, we've got these like shiny high quality floors. Um, you like instantly know like, oh, I'm in some place important and fancy. Um, and the, yes, so we go into, they did a lot more with the sprites. Like, oh my God, some of the custom sprite work for individual scenes and we're going to get to two. We have to enjoy one. Um, I'm going to need a walkthrough for character recruitment because there are 108 of them. And I am not going to let Leon Silverberg wreck this for me. <laughs> As he has for so many people before me. <sighs> See, that's a joke that the Suikoden fans will understand immediately. And the rest of you will understand eventually. <laughs> He's a particular character that is the reason why so many... Is House of Volume balanced, by the way? Is this... Is this okay for you folks? Can you hear me okay? Um, he's he's a character who's like single-handedly responsible for a lot of people not getting the best ending for 108 characters. So yeah, look at this like shiny place. Look at how fancy. Right? You know what I'm talking about. Leon. 
But we do get character portraits. I actually really didn't like the art in the first game, but the artist got better. Because she did the art for 4, which is one of the only good things about 4. And she's going to be doing the art for Auden too, which is the new game that just funded. Let's see, Tio and Tear. Is, is Meryl's last name Silverberg? Because they're not related to my knowledge. <laughs> that would be quite a crossover. <laughs> so we go in and, uh, huh, how interesting. I didn't know that. Um, so if you don't want to be spoiled in a Suikoden game, don't try to figure out who's not a star of destiny who's hanging out with you because sometimes there are spoilers there man Tio is tall oh oh I should have wandered around shouldn't I Oh my god, the US cover art. So I told you I know the singer for Reminiscence, the title theme of the second game, and she actually worked on the third game too. Um, but we 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 played in a we played a show together, which is how we knew each other, and afterwards we were talking about video games. And apparently in Japan, um bad American cover art is also infamous, which was amazing. So she showed me some Japanese website that was like making fun of like the old Mega Mans and stuff, and I was like, hold on. Have you seen the Suikoden 1 cover art? And she was like, no. And I was like, oh my god, okay, allow me to introduce this to you. And it was amazing. If you haven't seen it, it's so bad. She just was just like, who are those supposed to be? Who are those people? <laughs> it's a mystery. It's amazing. I was really excited to have that moment. You're gonna hear me talk a lot about... <sighs> I've had some really cool experiences specific to the Suikoden. Uh, to Suikoden. And I'm just gonna talk about them and you're gonna hear about them a lot and especially when we're playing the second game, you're gonna be like, Lauren, stop telling us about your trip to Tokyo. I apologize in advance because it's gonna happen. Um, are you, Chrono, are you showing them the terrible cover art for this game? It's really bad. Look at my little pointy shoes! Doesn't this feel epic? And you can't tell me, even if the sprites are stiff, you can't tell me that they're not impressively detailed compared to the sprites that we saw in Final Fantasy VI or even to Terra Enigma, which is one of the most detailed games I would say Terra Enigma and Psycho Setsu 3 probably have the best sprites and the most detailed art of any game on the Super Nintendo. But, yes, so if you look at the person in the back left with her, like, big fancy super cool outfit, she is a really cool design, especially as a sprite. Um, so here is some nice... Well, here's a little bit of background that we're being given in a really, like, a nice and tasteful way. Um, oh yeah, New Blue Glass. I'm, this is not in any way a criticism towards those other games. It's more of a, an observation. Even if you think that the sprites here are stiff, which they are, consider that this was early in a console's lifespan. Um, and so the, the level of detail that they were able to do was still greater than what they were able to do in other things. Hi, Jer, yes. <laughs> Speaking of people I know who like Sweet Um, Are you folks okay with me just kind of talking about what's happening with the story, what they're doing, and why they're doing it, and things like that? Because I haven't... I haven't inhabited the Sweet Odin story in the same way that I have Final Fantasy VI. But I've also written more <laughs> in this world, and so I know it very well in a different way. Um, so I'm just gonna ramble about stuff because that's what happens 
when I play a game not blind is I ramble at you about it. Um, so look at the brilliance. Um, there's a lot that they want to establish because one of the things that's so wonderful about the Suikoden games is you can't just stick a, a, a straightforward shorthand from, like, take Final Fantasy IV, for example. Like, it's it's a very fairy tale like story, so pretty quickly, pretty easily, you can see what's going on. You can kind of guess who's who, what the conflict is, because you've seen characters on things like this before. Um, and uh, like it, it's it's a bit easier to to pick up on. Final Fantasy VI has a, a surprising amount of nuance given what it is. Um, the Suikoden series has so much more nuance than Six did, um, but it's also much, it's, it's, it's just, it's much subtler and more complicated and more mature. Um, and so rather than you immediately having snap judgments about, okay, this is good, this is bad, this is like, this is the traitor, this is the that, um, there's like politics and history um both in the world and between the characters that you have to be able to understand um and so again just as i said like the music and the graphics when you first appear here in like the imperial castle um set the stage very well um so miki higashino um is the composer she she's amazing <laughs> Um, I've had some conversations with people who were like, oh, she was inspired by this video game music. I was like, no, no, they were both inspired by the same classical music. Um, so she has retired, um, but her music for these, the first two Suikoden games, and I think she did one other, she, she didn't do a lot um, of video game composition, um, but it's amazing and it's not quite like anything else. Um, and one of the things that I love about it is how well, it's, it's an incredibly diverse soundtrack and it serves to tell the story in a very story driven game. So you come here and you, you can tell from the sound, even here as we come to see the emperor and the music changes, it's again kind of got this like stately refined thing. Um, when Tio starts talking to you, when you first have that moment of dialogue, you, he doesn't say, ah, oh, my son, I am so proud of you. Um, but you kind of get it, um, and then when they they bring you into this this chamber and they introduce you and you see you have the same last name, you're like, oh, is this my dad? Um, this one line here does so much work. Like the, the the emperor addresses him fairly casually, how are things, which indicates a close relationship. Um, and so much as they were when we fought together in the War of Succession, Your Highness. Like, okay, these two know each other. Um, they do have a friendly relationship. There was this War of Succession, which I assume this is the Emperor. There was some sort of, you know, some, some, some fighting over who became Emperor, perhaps. Um, but so these are old war buddies. Um, and so even from here, you can be like, oh, look, it's probably my dad is formally introducing his son to the emperor, who's his old war buddy. Um, and then we're going to go from there. And here we get to have an introduction of another very important character here. Um, and see, um, ah, he, he's a great general. We, we understand kind of who these players in this story are, even though we kind of feel a little bit over and over your head because they don't, nobody sits down and tells you because you're not an outsider. In a lot of games, you're the outsider come to a place and people have to tell you what's going on. And a lot of stories too, like it's a great, it's a great way of, of getting around the player's lack of knowledge about something is, is make the character an outsider too. So like take for example Titus. Titus has no idea what's going on in Final Fantasy X and neither do you. So characters are explaining things to him which means sometimes you know they withhold information and control what he thinks about it and therefore you so you can have surprises. Um, it's very nicely done in that game like it's a very very intentional narrative. Here you like Tyr McDole he knows who all of these people are. He knows what all of this context is. Um, but you don't. 
but they don't want you to feel uncomfortable. So they do a good job of letting us know kind of contextually what's going on as we get through here. So it's not an exposition dump and it's quick. You know, it's not like they have paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs. Um, and here we see, ah, this is why we've been summoned troubling activity in the North. Um, here's our, you know, a first like action, go protect the border. So some of the translations of names get changed between the games. The city states of Jouston um, show up in a later game and they are not spelled Joustone, it's Jouston. So that is how I will be saying it because that's what I'm more familiar with. Um, oh my God, we'll get this we good into. I will, uh, so good. Um, but like, so, so here, like, if you get like the, the, the diction level, our disputes with the United City States of Jefferson are complicated. Like, it just, it sounds and feels like just the word choice. You, you it sets the tone of what it is. Um, and yes, Joey's name in the second game has like four different spellings. And like, this is such a statement of the Emperor's connection to, to Tio. Like this is, is this not an act of trust and friendship? I, the Emperor, have a sword that I consider my like lucky sword. I will give it to you. Um, so you get a good sense for that. And it's, it's a quick scene here. And then here, let me introduce my son as well. An impressive little countenance. Is this not excellent? It, it, it doesn't sound like, it sounds like an emperor saying it. It's not just a, it's not just like default, let's translate the words somehow. And it's not a weird Ted Woolseyism. It's extremely intentional. Quite an impressive little countenance. It says, just says so much about the character, like just the writing, the translation. Will you come into Imperial service? This is me, by the way, this is my portrait. Yes, the characters will have portraits, which is <clears throat> one of the best things about, like, yes, it's sprite based, but you also get to know what the characters look like. And at least in two, I don't think it happens so much here, but in two main characters, facial expressions will change for key moments and things like that. And you guess you you can be very informal if you want to. So Ted Woolsey was the translator of Final Fantasy VI and some other Super Nintendo era um, Square Enix games. I guess they were Square games at the time, Square Soft games. Um, and he had a very very idiosyncratic way of translating things. Um, <laughs> which if you've played Six or if you watched my stream of Six, I would point some of them out because they're a little weird. He made decisions. Uh, so you kind of get a sense for like how old am I? I'm not fully an adult yet, but I'm old enough to be entering Imperial service. It's all very formal. Oh, Commander Craze! My superior, excellent, I get to meet my superior officer. This is very exciting for me. Wendy's like, you are going to be hot when you're of legal age. And Tia's like, anyway. <laughs> oh. No, so the the gathering of stars of destiny will become apparent when it happens. Not every character with a portrait and a name is one of the stars of destiny. So there are over 108 characters in the game. There are 108 stars of destiny. So here, no pressure or anything. Your dad is really cool. Bum, bum, bum. Look at how much shorter I am than my dad. That's amazing. We have to talk to everybody. So here's a little bit of optional information. We're like, oh, okay. Lady Claudia has passed away and apparently Wendy looks like her. And yeah, a lot of um, a lot of characters don't go in your party. 
they they have other uses they have other roles but they aren't like whacking things with sticks although some of them whack with sticks or umbrellas or stuffed animals um <clears throat> early prosperity or fortune crystal i don't think i have dreamy warrior uh not necessarily utility members you'll see <laughs> This guy's having a hard time with professionalism. Oh, what? I don't get to go back in there and talk to anybody. Okay, fine. I hope that I can save. Well. Hello. Ah, Kasim. And so you're like, who is this person? He's clearly one of dad's friends. <laughs> a good friend. <laughs> this is maybe a little bit ham-fisted here. <clears throat> I don't know, Squizgar. And yes, Tyr will be whacking things with a stick. A bow staff? Is that the right way of saying it? So you're like, okay, Kasim is one of one of Dad's old war buddies too. Oh no! You lost characters to permadeath. Ah, so you always save before military battles. Oh my gosh. There can be, um, but permadeath is actually fairly avoidable. <coughs> Ridley. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. There's going to be a lot of little jokes like that. Um, I know that it's really obnoxious when somebody says jokes that not everybody gets. And I will try really hard not to do that all the time. <sighs> or I could just not. They last saw me when I was a baby child. <laughs> They're like, hey, did you get lost? Yeah, there is, there is permadeath in, <clears throat> I think, all of them, but like I said, you just save before you have an army battle. <laughs> can you, you can have permadeath in this one. The army battles are different. They're not, <sighs> once we get into their kind of tactical, like, move your character around on the map thing, kind of Shining Force-ish. In this, they're rock, paper, scissors. The, uh, the reflections might also have some trouble because this is emulated. But I do own the game. I do actually have a copy of it. It's very rare, but I have it. Um, <laughs> shiny boots, you're new? Oh, They're making fun of me and my shiny boots. They're pointy shoes. <laughs> Tina's like, child! Was it Ridley, Sam? I bet it was Ridley. He's usually the one that goes. Craze has kind of this like slightly Satan look going on. <laughs> Was Luke okay? That too, yes. <laughs> You're like, okay, fair. Now he's just your very unimpressed boss. I'm absolutely going to do the Tinto ending in two and then obviously load, but I will tell everyone all about that when we do that, but we're not there yet. No, Luke is not immune to permadeath in the first two games. Hilariously. <laughs> Dad is not impressed with this crummy dude that we're working under. Grammyo must be working sick. Worried sick who, I wonder, is Gremio, we ask ourselves at this point. Sound effects. Feels like I'm there. I heard the door open. I'm hearing the fountains. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I really want to cover this song. There's a lot of flute in this game. This is the version of the main theme that I want to get one of my guitar friends to cover with me. <sighs> I 
You have to listen to this. Is it too late for flute? Sophie would make, get mad. Anyway, this is Grammyo. I've had friends cosplay him before. There's been a lot of sweet good in cosplay in my life. <laughs> Grammyo might have some anxiety problems. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Priorities. <laughs> Casey missed it. Cremio. Cremio's a little high strung. Oh my god, I love this song. I would just like cover everything. I need to get a guitar friend to do this, but I really want to do Greg Minster's. Like, oh, a seven-year war of succession that, like, destroyed the capital city. Yeah, that sounds like that was probably pretty intense. The emperor's pretty popular. People legitimately seem to like him. <sighs> Master Milich, or Milik. I'll probably go without the fortune crystal, I think. <laughs> it's probably a little bit much for me. Oh, by the way, appraising items, that's a thing here. Like, how are we gonna say... How are we gonna say his name? Is it gonna be Milik? As a flute player, you know, Mr. Oppenheimer, maybe so. Oh, maybe it's not universally popular. Our hard earned taxes. Uh, no thanks. Like the fact that there's the fact that there's sound effects when you walk on staircase, very impressive for the time. I actually don't know if I ever noticed that before. <laughs> Little bit of world building here. Six, I mean five. What could that possibly mean? That can't be significant. Ha, ah, Sonya. I have opinions, but I will refrain from sharing them right now. <laughs> These guys are just sitting around. A little bit of... So well-dressed, oh my god. And the only possessor of a see-through bodysuit in any uh, game that I could think of offhand. 
That's the spirit, Espeon. <laughs> Is it still available on the PlayStation Network? Oh, but see, Dreamy Warrior, at, the t at this point in time, the player doesn't know. Like, so we're kind of like getting these like little bits and pieces. And some of it's a little ham-fisted. Like, sure, the people sitting around having dinner arguing over who the best general is is a little bit unsubtle to let us know who they are, but... Oh, right. So, like, appraising stuff. And then it's like, oh, what is this? Oh, it's the appraisal. I don't have any stuff worth appraising. Am I wearing my gear? I don't remember. Does anyone over here know? So, like, unnecessarily big spaces. I'm just gonna talk to everybody. Lennon camp. Sharpening blades. So so basically all of the um all of the uh like townspeople in this area are kind of talking about gameplay elements. So here's somebody who thinks the Emperor might not be so good. Hmm what's the truth? What's the situation? Oh, look, there's fish in there. Look at that detail. There's fish. They're like flopping around, but still, there's fish. I'm just gonna barge into people's houses. Ah! Ha <laughs> ha! Are you guys ready for this? Are you ready? We're gonna do this. Okay, so if you'll take a look around, these are wardrobes. But we're gonna do this. Big feathered hat. Lame tuxedo. <laughs> McDonald's does not approve of tuxedos. Hemmed red cape. Orange tights. Okay, so it's the same both sides. Rainbow colored pantaloons. Green suspenders. Fine fur cape with sapphires. Fruit printed tie. <laughs> I guess I'm reading these out loud. I don't usually do that, but I'm doing that here. Checkered beret. Pink boots. Leopard pattern cape. Are you getting a sense about this this fellow's fashion sense here? We didn't... Oh, here we go! This is my favorite! <laughs> I remember being like a, you know, a young teenager when this game came out and being like... Wait, what? What? <laughs> yes, Millick Oppenheimer owns a see-through bodysuit. Striped slacks, that just seems so mundane by comparison. Sea otter t-shirt, they're like, that's good, that's a good, good taste. Negligee, which is a lingerie, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sexy nighty. Triangular hat. Leather jacket with rivet spikes and safety pins, so a little bit of punk. Peppermint green. Black and red half coat. Very long hand woven scarf. Just like. Now notice that like So so we we could we could safely <laughs> Summer sweater, what even? We we could safely say, you know, Millic Oppenheimer's taste in clothing is extra. But it's not <laughs> Quill, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, but it's, I appreciate that it's not limited to like gender. We're not done yet here. Hold on. Are you gonna tell Millic Oppenheimer that he can't wear a sweater in summer? The man owns a see through bodysuit. Do you think he cares about your fashion limitations? No. No, he doesn't. S such a fantastic dresser. Welcome to Millic Oppenheimer. Look at that hat. He is truly a glorious person. He doesn't care about heat stroke. What's heat stroke gonna do to Millic Oppenheimer, huh? Nothing. It wouldn't dare harm his fabulous fashion sense. He's got to be presentable for the Emperor. So you're like, okay, I'm get, beginning to get a sense. He's also one of the great generals, by the way. Um, and you're like, I don't know who of any of these characters is going to be important moving forward. 
Um, presumably the generals are going to have some significance since my dad is one of them. Rune crystals. Runes are... So the way magic works in this game is kind of like... You know spell slots in D&D? It's you get you get spell slots and you have a finite number of them. It's not it's not like poke I don't know I don't play enough Pokemon I know Speaker are better than Pokemon. My hometown in the boonies. Hold on I think I might be lost. Have I talked to you already? <laughs> Country bumpkins. No music. What am I doing? Ah. I accidentally went to the palace. That's not where I wanted to go. So you equip different runes, and each rune will f has its own set of spells, and then you your character has certain spell slots. Um, and so if you have like X number of level one spell slots and X number of level two spell slots, then whatever that rune's level one spell slot or level one spell is and level two spell is, you'll have that many. If you change to a different rune, then you'll have the same number of level one and level two slots, just whatever that rune has. Um, Lady Sonya is concerned about Tio. Notice that, like, we were at our place. We we're over here at Sonya's place. No, yeah, I had really strong. So I have very strong feelings about this woman. God, I didn't realize how tall Tio is. So Tio has to come talk to her. He's about to go on a mission. He's got to talk to her. Um, so you have a certain way I haven't been. Do any of the general sub houses? Is it just the three of us? Oh, I didn't. Oh, that's right. You can look at the books. Let's take a look at our books. You can look at bookshelves. Oh, wait. Does she have bookshelves? Okay, so yeah, if you... So she and Tio are lovers. I have feelings about her as a stepmom figure. <laughs> um... Oh, man. Hi, Pawn! <laughs> Pawn is a very subtle person. <laughs> oh, Cleo! Hi, Cleo! <laughs> Don't just barge into my room. <laughs> so this is my household. Oh man, Sirius Inc. It's so good. Speak Good in 2 is even better, but Speak Good in 1 is really good. Hey, I yelled at. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, you should be looking at anyone's belongings like this, but that doesn't stop us. We are an RPG hero, and we will look at people's diaries and in their wardrobes if we want to. Oh, man. So one of the things that I love here is, like, the 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 degree of like intimacy with the way that the people in the McDowell household talk to each other like it's clearly this is the McDowell household these are this is our, our our family retinue basically like they're clearly not siblings you know they they refer to me as young master um are we gonna do it I can't I can't do it I can't do it I can't be mean to Gremio. But yeah, so like clearly like this would be like that they're the household servants. They're part of the household. Like Gremio clearly does the cooking and cleaning. These two are warriors. 
Tickling is mean when you're cooking? Also, tickling is mean if you don't have the other person's consent. So you want to see. He said this is the most important step in cooking in the stew. Yeah, so Gremio's stew. Oh man! Oh, it's ten! But Gremio's role in the McDole household is, is, is domestic more than violence. Well, Cleo's a pretty normal name. It's interesting, this is such a, like, childhood th conversation. Let's go up to your room and talk. Um, when I played this game for the first time, I was a kid. My friends would come over. We go up to my room and hang out. That's right, Yanapi. We are playing Sweet and we are talking about it. I really wanted to bust my flute out, but it's 8 p.m. and I don't know if my neighbor would like that. So you should have to deal with singing instead. Joins the entourage. Oh my god, I forgot how bad the sound effects are. And just how kind of like rough looking the menus are. Because it's an old game. Okay, so strength is the um, profile, basically. Oh no, he's got a question mark. What could that possibly- that, that can't be important. Nothing important about that. Here's our our dinner table. What's in setup? Oh. Oh, we should probably change the message speed to fast. Let's go ahead and go with that. So you see Gremio's up there setting the table. So we have a little bit of development as well. Everybody's going to go get dinner. Are we gonna let Ted join us, our BFF slash sort of foster brother? Yes, we are. And the music's amazing. Ted wants to know about everything. <laughs> He's like, you just had a cool adventure and I want to hear about it. Oh man, if you want to see bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, we'll play the start of Sweet Coden 2. Oh boy. Oh dear. Oh Ted, do you really? Mm. Ted's like, um, I've kind of got a secret. Can I, can I tell you a secret? It's a really important secret. Cremio's like, excuse me, we have mundane dinner to have. You put your secrets away. And Ted's like, actually, I'll take this excuse because I'm scared. Like, that's, that's clearly what that is. And talk to everybody else. It's clearly... I mean, it's like, oh no. Pawn really likes food. One of his, one of the things he says later in the game if you talk to him is, where's my food, period? No question mark. Yes, Gremio is an ex, he's an excellent mom. God, you're so tall, Tio. Why did I not notice how tall you are? He's, of course, all trying to be like proper dadly. I get to be the man of the house. And, like, it just, it has this, like, really good, like, wholesome family feel, doesn't it? Like, even if you don't know these people, which some of you do, some of you don't, like, you know, you don't get the impression, like, nobody here is, like, made out to be, like, 
100% perfect, but like you feel this like warmth and this love and you're like, this is a good family that they get along, they love each other, they take care of each other, it's a good household. Sure, you know, some of them are basically servants or, or underlings in some capacity, but like that's not really a, a like, it's not a lot of conflict. Like, it's a, it's a good, loving household. It's, it's a sweet family dynamic, yeah. And yes, there was a, there's a Kickstarter that the original team behind Speaker did. And like, various original team members have teamed up and it funded very quickly. I'm very excited about it. Hi, Stolen Light! Oh, Grumio. Yeah, they're technically servants that are treated like family, and I think that says so much about T.O. McDull. Um, you know, he's like a great general. He's, you know, this super important figure, but look at how he treats the people under him. Yeah, it was funded super quickly and hit every single stretch goal, and I'm very excited. Oh man, Talos Principle. I can't squeak about the Talos Principle because I'm playing Suikoden instead! I can only... I can only handle so much. Anyway, yes, we're gonna, we're gonna stream Aiden when it comes out in two years. I'm very excited about it. Uh. He's not bringing his people with him. He's leaving them to help his son. This does feel a little bit ominous, doesn't it? Like, um, a scene like this, you know at some point I am going to have a, a, a call back to this moment. This is the moment before everything happens whatever the everything is going to be but it's also really touching because it's genuinely a touching moment Okay, you can probably tell from my face. <laughs> this is actually really sad. It's not a blind stream, so there will probably be spoilers that come up. And some of those spoilers are going to be Lauren crying in like the first five minutes of the game because she knows what happens to them. Also, I had forgotten about this moment of him coming in to say goodbye to his son even when he's sleeping. Like, this is just so sweet and loving. You know, then there's like kind of like shortage of good parents and good parental figures in games. And so Tyr doesn't, or Tyr doesn't know that um, his dad came in, but just, it's such a sweet moment. He just wants to come in and take one good look at his son and be like, I love you. I'll see you later. Yeah. Oh, my God. So the Sweet Godin games are in some ways absolutely brutal. Just FYI. Sweet Godin 2 makes that very clear very early on. <laughs> um... You have the birds singing, like, it just, you feel like you're there. At least you did back in the day. Like, when it's like, oh, this level of sound design is amazing. And yes, Gromeo has beautiful hair. Oh my god, yeah, it'd be the second game. I actually played through the opening section of the second game and had to put it down and wasn't sure I was going to be able to pick it back up. Um, so when we play it, I, I will give a, a, a minor content warning as far as um, the violence and it feels like the situation. Like, it doesn't, like, show, like, graphic on-screen violence in a way that will give you nightmares, but the situation is intense. Um, so, yes, you get to join the Imperial forces. 
so the reason why it's entourage is because there 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 are different terms depending on how and when people join you. So what could this mean, Pawn? <laughs> what are you talking about, Pawn? Are you asking Cleo out? Yeah, well, the second game, I think, wants to let you know what you're getting into. Because um, it, it's pretty intense. <laughs> in a bunch of places. My goodness. So, like, the first section lets you know that's going to happen. So you can self-select if you're not comfortable with it. And again, it's not anything that I think would be, like... It's not presented in a way that will be, like, triggering nightmares. Um, but it is intense. There are consequences. These are games about war and the consequences and costs of war on human lives and human relationships. Um, and it's not a larger than life, um, like fairy tale scale. It is a family. It is a person. It is a group of people. It is a village where you know everyone in it. Um, so. <clears throat> Oh my gosh. Ha, Torin. Yes. We're allowed to bring our retinue with us. Oh, Pawn. You're such a goof. All right, Ted. Hey, you're sleeping in late. All right, Ted. I, I, did, did I not try to wake him up? I tried to wake him up. I totally did. Man, it's such a good song. There is a callback to this. There's something very clever that they do with this music later in the game that is so effective. So effective. Well, get used to it. It's actually more of a piccolo or a fife. Um, so get, get used to very high-pitched fluting happening in this series. It's going to happen a lot. Uh, okay, I wasn't sure if this changed. Flute loops. Actually, I like Honey Nut Cheerios and Frosted Shredded Wheat. Oh man. Then you know where things are. Hmm, there's rebels. The Liberation Army. Traitors. What could this be? What could be? Surely nothing important. I'm actually really curious. I'm curious who I'm going to put in my parties. <laughs> oh, hello, Fudge. Uh, I wonder if... <sighs> Hold on. I'm going to text my sister and ask her if she... Oh, that's a spoiler. I have drawn my sister some pictures from this game back in the day, and I want to show those to you. Because my sister loved Futch. This punk. Oh my god, they call him a punk all the time. It's the ultimate insult in the Suikoden universe. Alright, we'll see if my sister if my sister will send me a photo of the painting that I did for her. It's a great big spoiler for Suikoden 1 and 2, but that's okay. You don't necessarily have to know what it means. Oh, let's go talk to him. So the dragons in Suikoden sound like Oh, Fudge. 
<laughs> These two are such BFFs. Oh no. Uh, anyway, dragons sound like elephants in the Suigoden series, so have fun with that. I don't even know what these are. I'm not wrong, am I? <laughs> they sound like elephants. <sighs> oh, dragon horses. Gull horses? I don't know. I forgot about them. I don't know if we ride normal horses ever or if we are like chocobos here. <laughs> okay, control C. <laughs> Your phone can just be a screaming elephant dragon. <laughs> the Golden Emperor. Tia's gonna take care of it. Hey now. Somebody's like, you're tall. Someone else is like, you're short. Yeah, I'm gonna get all 108 stars because I don't have to worry about spoilers because I know the game. I just don't. So I'm gonna get a walkthrough. There are spoiler free get all the character walkthroughs. So we might get one of those. The little boy, look, just because I'm shorter than literally everybody else doesn't mean I don't remember exactly how short he is. Pretty sure that his height is somewhere. You know we're not gonna go visit Craze just yet. We gotta go talk to some more people. Bum, ba, dum, ba. <laughs> like, don't go in and bug him. Oh my god. Um, 15, I think. I think he's 15. So he's like old enough to not to be a child, but not an adult yet. I think he's 15. Because he was older than me when I played the game. But, uh... Can anyone confirm or deny? I, I don't know why it's 15 in my head, but it is. Sixteen, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's very, like, this is very showing off. If you remember that this game came out again very early in the PlayStation's life. Okay, so we're gonna go visit Lake Knot to go get some star charts. I don't know. <laughs> Shall we be a little butt? Shall we be a little butt? I think we should. There weren't that many <laughs> PlayStation sprite based like RPGs. I want to treat you like a fool because you're a fool, Grace. Have you considered that? Will will I now? Oh man. There's a song that I play on my flute. <laughs> Thanks, Chrono. Oh man. One of the things that I really like about this game is that there's stuff in it that is really just kind of like feels like it's just like in this game and then as you play more of the games you're like oh there's something bigger going on these characters are part of something bigger than just what happens in this no the second oh my god Yonopi, the second game is so good I'm gonna try to get through this one relatively fast because I really want to get to the second game but we're gonna take an undertale break because the 15th is undertale's fifth anniversary and I'm going to boot up Undertale again, I think. So we're going to have two weeks of this, then a little bit of Undertale, then we're going to go back to this. I hope you guys will forgive me for that. There's new Undertale content? 
I didn't know there was new Undertale content. Yeah, yeah, Anna P, you should absolutely play the second Suicoden. It is amazing, and you should experience it for yourself the first time. Because it's amazing. Yeah, Jan, you can't, you can't, oh, I don't have it on Switch. It has a couple of little things, but no, I don't have it on Switch. And Pawn is like, I disapprove of this. Pawn, tear as a kid. <laughs> I, but I have anxiety, Grimio <laughs> says. Pat is so excited. Is that my computer? No, that's not my computer. That's the fountains in the game. I can't always tell the difference. I need to cut my hair. It's a little bit longer than it should be right now. I haven't gotten around to it. Fudge! Fudge! <laughs> uh, I love it. You're a punk. No, you're a punk. No, you're a punk. 300 years? What? Ted. What could that possibly mean? It's a mystery. Yeah, the sound design in this was amazing at the time. It's a little bit, a little bit rough around the edges now, but it was like, oh no, teenage boys fighting. Uh... All right. Again, the original cover art for this is so bad. It's amazing. The American cover art is hilariously bad. Oh man, are you ready for graphics? Are you ready for graphics? I think he's 12. The Dragon Knights. Oh man. <laughs> Have I equipped my stuff? Okay, I probably... I did, Jamie Warrior, and I'm very excited about it. <laughs> Alright, this is right. That's right. Oh my god, I love the music in this game so much. Holly boys! I'm sorry. I just love the music. It's so good. Oh, Unite Attacks. <laughs> Let this be context for you so that when Ayuden comes out it looks a lot like this. So, there are Unite Attacks? between certain characters in the game. So 
the way this the way leveling works you can't really grind in this game you get up to level and then you're up to level and that's that which is good because there's a lot of characters that join your party and so you just put them in your party and after a couple of fights they're they're caught up apparently Auden is not going to have that they're gonna have a more traditional leveling system but that's fine Wow, I didn't realize how quick the transitions here are. There's something kind of jarring about them. And let's do free will. Alright, folks. Just do your thing. Just Yeah, go team. Oh no, there's a Holly Boy coming for me. It's okay. Pawn punched him. We're all good. Wow, I hadn't realized just how rough this looks like the the menus and stuff hmm oh, oh hold on Okay. Hey, 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 hey. So you folks know how much I hate um, inventory management? <sighs> Yanapi, I'm totally legally playing this game on my computer too. <laughs> so um, anyway, you see the number of item slots I have and that my inventory counts? Observe. Uh, what, Ted? You can't use it. Oh my God, Ted! Why, Ted? Ted, honey, you can't even wear a tunic. I guess you're caster type. Hi, Luke. Oh my God, I really hate the art. <laughs> I believe that Ted couldn't wear that. Luke, you are such a little butt. <sighs> so Luke is a little butt, by the way. <laughs> he's he's a little butt. Oh my gosh. He comes back in this series. He has more of a story at, at a later date, but he's a little butt. Oh my gosh. He is our little butt. No, 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 I love Luke. I love Luke in all of his little butt glory. That's okay, Nick. A lot of character designs are hard to understand. All right, so we're gonna attack you. We're gonna attack you. Oh, you can't unite? You're, yeah, Borun him, yeah. So, so runes are not just casting spells. There are also runes that one might use um, uh, for statusy type things. Um, or for attack things, like, like, Pond's boar rune is an attack rune, so it's going to be that. But now he's unbalanced, which means he's out for the next turn. So you have to make sure that, yeah, I forgot that you have to do it on Gremio. I don't know if I would say Luke is sweet, but I love him anyway. All right. You fight, you fight, you're gonna defend, you attack, and do you have any healing items? Does anyone have any healing items? You do. All right, let's keep Tear from dying, please. Bam. Oh no, you do big damages. Wait, hold on, is it is it is it strong against Cleo? It's strong against Cleo. Well, I guess. Talisman attack, that sounds good. You are going to heal Gremio so he doesn't die. Yeah, bribe is just you give money and then the fight ends, theoretically. Doesn't always work. 
Okay, look, what color is Flick's hair? Flick's hair is the same color as Locke's hair. What color is Locke's hair? Is it brown? Is it gray? Is it silver? I don't know. It's somewhere in the vicinity of brown or gray. I don't know. Um, I'm not gonna bribe bosses. I'm gonna hit them in the face with sticks. Oh no, this doesn't look good. Oh no! Smoosh. It's okay. They took care of it. That's my team. Is this map not supposed to be blue? Or is something wrong with the emulation? I love both Flick and Victor in different ways. I probably should have leveled up before the boss fight, but I didn't. So it's not supposed to be blue. Okay, I thought I would have noticed that. Yes, Locke's hair is blonde in Amano's drawings, but so is everyone's hair. Tara's hair is blonde. Garnet's hair is blonde. <laughs> so I just don't pay any attention if 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 Amano draws them as blonde. No, his his character art, his sprite, his like three D or two D models and stuff like somewhere between either brown or gray, depending. And Flick's hair is the exact same way in this game. Pong's like what the heck. This is the- this game has so many obnoxious, like, young boys in the beginning. Like, Ted is a little bit of a butt sometimes. Butch is definitely a butt. Luke is the biggest butt. <laughs> like, why do you test this? Why even, Luke? He's the most butt. I should probably make sure my party's not gonna die. Eh, we're fine. We leveled. We're all good. Everything's fine. <sighs> yes. Bigger butt than Chaco. Oh, thank you, Blue Glass. I'm glad to hear it. I've got more underway that I've been working on. <laughs> the Final Fantasy VI fanfic that has become 25,000 words in a month. <laughs> <sighs> Yes, Chaco is very cute. He has a very cute design. Look at this weird, creepy place we're in right now. What's going on with it? Why does it have these strange pillars? Oh wait, it's a magic place. Magic places are allowed to look weird. Like not, your place is not very welcoming. Look at this cool staircase. We can go up the stairs. Look at how dramatic. Yeah, I don't know exactly how long she's been here, though. Like, I don't know that this is her old place. Is, is that a... It's such a woodwind-heavy heavy song, like... Like, she just... Higashino has such a... an orchestral approach to using instruments like you get your double reeds and then a bunch more of the woodwinds come in oh man are you ready for another good song maybe we could just not look, not visit her let's go into her creepy chamber of creepiness it's so pretty look at the prettiness look at how pretty the colors it's really nicely done. You can't convince me that it's not nicely done. I will think you're wrong. Anyway, soon. Everyone just thinks you're such hot stuff. Ted's like, oh, she's pretty and she thinks you're cute. Hmm. Like, oh, that's unprofessional of me. Or else perhaps they were too lazy to animate the fire. Todd's like, man, she's hot. The astral conclusion is all capitalized. Cleo takes this very seriously. 
the astral conclusions. See, Pawn always wants something to eat. It's very funny. They might be crystals, I don't know. If I played Oboe. I should ask Kristen if she'll play this song with me. Isn't this song called Their Star? You could have named yourself Butts and she would still tell you that you had a friendly name. <laughs> or McNugget. <laughs> Sorry, I really liked that one. <sighs> She's like, oh, this is gonna... Buckle up, folks. So she's not lying or exaggerating. You have an important destiny that sucks. By the way, you don't ever want to be the hero of a Suikoden game. You just, you do not. You just don't, don't do it. If anyone like offers you an RPG to be the hero of, do not pick a Suikoden game. No, you don't want it. <laughs> Well, that's interesting, the, um, the stained glass overlay, if you look on him. They're trying to do some fancy graphics stuff. I haven't played a Yoko Taro game, but in general it sucks to be the Tenkai star. <laughs> uh, it's true, which is not exactly the bastion of professionalism. Pawn, you should probably bring granola bars with you so you don't get hangry. This makes me think of one of the songs from the Mother One vocal collection. It wouldn't be the end of the world to live in a Suikoden world, but you don't want to be the Tenkai star. Luke. biggest butt of them all is Luke. Uh, punk is the ultimate insult. It's all these like obnoxious bratty little teen boys. Are you ready for the elephant? There we go. Uh, I 
actually don't know whether P fan fangirls liked those pairings. Although it probably comes as no surprise that Luke, for the little teenage girls who played this game, liked to have Luke be in love him, hate him relationships with other boys. <laughs> Don't know if they'll let you bring your dragon into a theater which but okay, child. How do you know what I'm supposed to do anyway? What a drag. Haha. <laughs> See, drag, dragon, drag. <sighs> Maybe they're not friends. Unimaginable. All right, let's go turn this in. Boss, I'm home. Bum, bum, ba, da, ba. Bum, bum, ba, ba. Like it just—it sounds like a baroque piece from from like of the type of music that it is. It sounds like that because that's what she looked at clearly to write it, to have inspiration. Um, yeah, oh my god, but we're gonna get to speak it into and the soundtrack is amazing. Such a jerk. Come on, is that impressed? For some reason, they failed to pay their taxes. So we gotta go take care of that. I'm sure it's just a misunderstanding. I'm sure everyone wants to support the good and wholesome empire that they live in. Right? Oh no. This can only end well. This is this is going to go great. I feel really inspired about my involvement with the empire and the imperial people that I'm interacting with. Although, like, they do, by, by establishing, like, your, your first impression of the Empire um, is Barbarossa, who seems fine. Like, you know, he's your dad's friend. He's cool to your dad. Your dad seems like a great person. Um, so you've got these, like, positive impressions of the Empire. Go to speak it in two, get the friendship rune. I do a good job with the friendship rune. Or is it the sunshine rune? Oh, can I get free heals at the end? Do I need a free heal? Oh, I do need a free heal. I thought I could get a free heal by sleeping in my own bed, but it turns out that I'm on a mission, so I don't get to do that. Oh, we should probably stop by some of the shops, maybe, and get some clothes. Oh, I didn't realize that Marie was in Gregminster. So she, as you can probably tell from my reaction to her, she is a character who, who you recruit. Um, all right.
Shall we be off then? To Rockland? East? Oh my god. I love this music! You shouldn't me this is a good soundtrack for flute? Oh no, it's a wild boar! Alright. Maybe I should level. I don't know. I'll have to grind. These two will take care of business. Thank you, boys! Oh, I don't know actually, Nick. Should I go back in and... Yeah, sure. Let's go see if we've got, um... A rune master. Here we go. Yes. Let's do it. Hi. Let's attach this rune. To Cleo. Excellent. Yeah, Cleo is a decent spellcaster. She's the one you're supposed to put it on. That's why Lake Knot tells you to put it on her. Bye, Sam. Have a good evening. Thank you for dropping by. Stay safe. Okay. Equipment. Sorry, so hard for equipment. I don't know if I should get more gear. Oh, there's also like a bazillion. <laughs> there's no helmet. The helmet is not there. To buy clothes for my folks here. Oh. I don't know, still in light. I really don't know. Oh, there's more stuff. We get shoes. <laughs> Nobody else has any shoes. Band is the best bet that we've got. Uh, I don't remember if this is the kind of game where you want to like care about this. Okay, so here's the most annoying part of the game. Stop being naked, Ted. Put on some clothes. Sometimes games will like give you equipment. I don't remember if I do here or not. If I do, if I get it, rather. All right, Pollen. Okay. 
So now we gotta do some more inventory management. <sighs> Ted, why? Ah. Did I get any more gear? Did anybody get anything else that they don't have equipped? Did I do this wrong? Okay, well, we're gonna get Ted some shoes. They're, they're cheap. He can get some shoes. Alright, Ted, try not to die. There we go. Cool! Slightly less likely to die, maybe. That's slightly better gear. Wait, hold on. Oh, okay. I should probably uh, sell the old stuff. That's that's fair. I don't think I'm gonna need it. Oh look, that are like fun shoes right there. Look at that. Look how many shoes we can buy. We're not gonna buy shoes. We might need that money for something else later. How do I get out of here? Oh, it's really sudden. Okay. We're just gonna use the talisman attack a lot because why not? I don't think it costs anything. Although I don't know that we'll need it here. <laughs> Do you notice how little experience I'm getting now? It was... Oops. Oh no, it's a fuzzball! It's a bonbon, excuse me. Alright. Fortunately, we've got a team and we are of a good level. Man, that change to the uh, blue screen is really weird. All right, this looks like where we're supposed to go, folks. Uh-oh, Grady. Grady might not be good. Listen to that flute. I just cover the entire soundtrack. This kid is hungry. We don't care about the Emperor because we're country bumpkins. Everything is bad. Grady might suck a lot. That's the impression that I'm getting here. He might be bad news. Oh no, is there going to be new armor that I should have bought? Oh no, there are more monsters now. Can you check the food people are cooking? I don't know. Here can use that. All right. <laughs> oh God, he has a cape equipped. So your things aren't great here in Rockland. Surprise, surprise. Can you talk to their food? No, it doesn't look like we can talk to their food. Alas. Oh, Marco! No, Marco. I don't want to do this. Okay, bye, Marco. No. Sorry. I cannot have that song happen and not make that sound, okay? Just to let you know every single time that we are ever doing that, you're gonna hear wow, like that's just gonna happen. So. So people here are hungry because their food gets taken from them. And it does look like, like you can tell by looking at this place that they're on hard times. 
And everyone here is blaming the Emperor for what's going on because, like, they have no way of knowing otherwise. So, yeah. Emperor Barbarossa seems okay. Um. Perhaps the rest of the army, not so much. The bandits are back. Yes, we have to talk to everything. Oh, loneliness is a slow acting but fatal poison. That is. Okay, so. No, I'm not ever gonna do five side quests. They're, they take too much, like, rushing through things. Not gonna happen, sorry. Oh, I think the poison line is really well written. Well, it was here. Never mind, I walked around in a circle without realizing it. My sense of direction is impeccable. Alright, you guys ready to progress the story? Let's do it! Very subtle here. But it's very plausible. Uh, yes, Sal. <laughs> the Suicoden games are about war. They're about the human cost of war. Um, and uh, the, 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 the best and worst of humanity in situations that are extremely difficult. Um, and it's not like, war as hell, blah, 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 like, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Like, it's not like that kind of like almost edgelordy type thing. Um, but there are consequences and things are rough. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh oh, Grady. Uh oh. Uh oh. Everything's off to a great start. possibly be responsible for fighting these bandits. Translation thing, Jan. <laughs> Pond's like, yes, fighting. If I can't have food, I'm gonna have a fight. And Ted's like, yes, this is great. Sure, let's do it. Cleo, no. No, I just, I hate the boys will be boys excuse. Yeah, I don't get to go raid. Look at the giant treasure chest in there. I want it, but I don't get to have it. I know, is this door locked? Oh no, what am I gonna do? Go fight some bandits, I guess. This place has definitely been having a rough time of it. I just want to like cover the entire soundtrack. Uh oh! Look at these soldier ants. They have little helmets and spears. I think I think it's funny and clever. Okay, so I am gonna really probably get myself in trouble here because I'm probably not gonna take the fights as seriously as I should. Bam! Good job, boys. 
Oh, I guess I am under leveled here a little bit. Well, that's all right. Oh, there's like a counter melody in there. Oh. I actually have a cover of this one that I've been working on for a million years. It's called Dan Distant Mountain. I need to finish it, the cover. I got a friend who plays piccolo to play the piccolo line. That's the first part there. And I got a friend to play that bass part. Who likes to speak it in too. It's such a good song. It's gonna be like a little alto flute part coming in too with the melody. Oh man, it's so good. I guess it's not an alto flute in this. I guess it's a string instrument, but whatever, it's a flute. Everything's a flute. I get my hands on it. I should play my cover of this in progress for you folks. Key change. <laughs> Pawn's like, hold up. <laughs> Pawn's like, oh my god, I see what's happening here. Ted, meanwhile, is kind of an idiot, but that's okay. Yeah, so Gromeo fights with a giant axe, by the way, if you haven't noticed that. Oh no, there's bandits! What do we do? Oh no, there's bandits! Flute hook shot, huh? Could happen. I don't know how it would work, but it could happen. Bam! I seem to recall this game is pretty easy, except for some of the bosses. Ah, it took me a minute to place this song. Oh no, there's so many of them! Alright, let's just like let my party do this. Come on guys. Just whack some bad guys. This isn't going so great, is it? Okay. Lesson learned, don't do that. <sighs> Fine. Oh, I guess I'll manually say who does what. By the way, when it zooms in like that, I mean somebody's got a critical hit. It's very exciting. No, no, it's not blue. It doesn't know. I want to find treasure chests. Yes, treasure chests. Boots. Who wants footwear? Tear. You're already wearing boots. Okay. Uh. Hold on. Somebody's got boots. You don't need these boots. Oh, I, I might want to heal Grammy. I know that's true. Um. Here, you can have some boots. Okay. Equip. Boots. Boots! Alright, item. Party item. Oh, I don't have any party items. Have some medicines. Let's put some medicines. Let's use that on Gremio. Bam! Okay. So party items can't be used in combat. So you you want to like have your healing items in the right hands. Where is this gonna go? Oh, I want a treasure chest. That's not a treasure chest. Uh, this is the opposite of a treasure chest. It's a bad guy. Alright. 
We're just gonna do this. Cause why not? Blam. Oh no! Cleo seems like she's got the highest chance of being missed. I don't know which way I'm supposed to go, so I'm just gonna go not the ways that I think I'm supposed to go. Oh yeah, treasure chest. Oh no, there's two boars, that's bad. Um. Just in case. Oh! Okay. Oh man, you finished Mother 3, did you cry? I cried a lot. I will be crying during this game too. Oh yay, levels! Good job, team! Oh, we're getting so much money too, we're gonna be able to buy clothing. So that's an antique, we don't necessarily know what it is, we're gonna have to get it appraised. Did your friend like it? All right. So you're gonna fight that. You folks are gonna unite against this guy. Hmm. Is that a Black Hole Sun reference, Chrono? I know that song because it's in Rockman. And that's how I roll. I'm cool that way. I'm very cool. Yay! Alright, look how much money we're making. Wait, are there treasure chests over there? Oh, okay. Yes! Just think of all the clothes we can buy with this. Milik, you better watch out. You've got a rival for clothing collecting and it's me. Uh, I do actually really like things. It's terrible. Man, when my back row characters can kill them in one hit, they're definitely low level. Oh no! This is the way I'm supposed to go! Unthinkable! Better backtrack. Oh yes. Uh. Mother is a very, mother, the, mother three is a very objectively anti-capitalist game. <laughs> Extraordinarily so. Like Wander Song is going in directions that I'm like, oh, okay, you liked Mother three because they're hand, they hand, have handled some things in a similar way. Oh, I got a rune piece. Those are items that you can use, I believe, to have some a smaller version of the effect of the rune. I might be mistaken, but I think that's what it is. Okay. Yeah! Uh-oh. Ah! It's still better than the last time. Oh, what? Somebody must have countered. Excellent. Okay. You attack that. You're gonna unite against this little guy in the middle. You're gonna attack this guy. That sounds good. We're gonna do this. Yeah. No. The worst. <laughs> no, that's for Yenipi. I'm sorry. Am I saying your name wrong? I, I'm sure I've asked you this before, but I say it like it rhymes with canopy, and I don't know if that's actually correct. Man, I am. Pointy hat. Pointy hat. Who's going to wear the pointy hat? Defense room piece. Oh no, that's a that's a permanent. Okay, my defense. That's cool. I'll just do that. That's cool. Pointed hat. Oh, you can wear that, Gremio. Oh, it's a mute. Cause there's there's a you can have a balloon, but if you have a pointy hat, then you're immune. Oh man, okay. Alright, Grumio. Oh, hat. Find it. Balloon is a weird status effect. Secret of Mana has that as well. I 
can't think of any other games that do. I'm sure there are some, though. <sighs> when I talk to people about the Suikoden games, I... So is this gonna be enough to do it? Yes. No! When I talk to people about the Suikoden games, I, I try to be very frank about the fact that the gameplay is largely uninspiring. Um, it has a few, like, nice little twists in a way, and that, like, oh, you should drink some water. Flutie Bot says you should drink some water. I forgot to bring water into my room, because I was like, oh, I'm going to actually have water in my room so that I can drink water when Flutie Bot says to. But look at me not doing that. Oops. Although I think we can just attack these folks. Um, so having six characters in a party is interesting because it's, it's, are there any other games besides the Suikoden series that have a six person party like this? Um, cause you have, that's why you have three in the front and three in the back. Um, and in Suikoden three gameplay wise, like they dig more into that. Um, uh oh. That bandit in the middle is a different color. I don't know if that makes a difference or not. Well, we'll find out shortly, I'm sure. Oh, well, maybe we won't. Free will is basically like, I don't feel like issuing commands, my party can take care of this. Yes! Leveling up! Party, party, party. Oh. Do we need to heal him? He can probably go another fight. Oh, okay, so so if you look at, um, there's underneath the health, there's a little, like, yellow star thing. That's your magic spell slots. So if you look, because it's like level one, two, three, and four, Cleo has two spell slots for level one. Um, Ted and Tyr both have one. Um, and Garmio and Pawn don't. Um, Jando, you can gamble to get money. Um, but you have to have some seed money first, but that's, you fund your army. <sighs> right, I forgot about this. Yeah, so having, having six characters is interesting. So juggling kind of like who's doing what and what row they're in, um, and which characters in your party that have unite attacks and how you're gonna use those, and the dreaded, cursed item management and all that stuff. Like, it's interesting. You know what? This is what Free Will was created for. <laughs> um. So it has some, you notice how little, like just how little experience we're getting now because we're caught up to level, which is why grinding does not work in this game. Fantasy Star 4 has five? Okay. Yeah, I have to like visualize the screen and the characters' names, but it doesn't have rows. Having six characters is a lot. Having the two rows is a big part of the mechanic. Um, yeah, we're gonna heal for the boss. That I can do. <laughs> Even I. We're gonna give medicine to somebody who's not tier also. Okay, you're gonna give this and over to Cleo or Pawn. Everyone should have Everyone should have a medicine bottle. Okay, everyone's got a medicine bottle. We're good. Okay, can I put this? Oh, okay. Oh, I thought party item. Okay, well, whatever. Either way, we're gonna do this now. I probably could have healed Pawn too, but I didn't. So we'll be fine. It'll be all right. <laughs> I'm sure we'll be okay. I'm sure we'll manage. Okay, you fight the soldier ant. 
You two can unite on the queen. Flaming arrows on the queen. And you're gonna attack the soldier ant too. Yeah! It's a spirit team. Right, so this is magic effects. Yeah! Wait, did they only do eight damage? What? She summoned more ants? Oh no! Oh no, the emulator really didn't like that. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's amazing. I appreciate the Final Fantasy VI sprites that you're using, Shuttle and Mine Yeah, Pawn really needs a heal, so let us. <laughs> Oh man, okay. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like, uh, I don't I seem to call that didn't do any damage to her, so we're gonna like attack some of these ants. And you're gonna use flaming arrows on the queen, and you are going to use your healing item on. Oh. <sighs> okay. Ugh. You're gonna heal yourself. You're going to. Use your boar rune on the queen ant. You're going to use flaming arrows on the queen ant. You are going to heal Pawn. Hopefully we won't die. Yeah. Blam, set on fire. That's it, only do one damage to my party, oh no. Well, that's just gonna keep happening. Oh no, lady! That does not do any damage. Ha, ah, they killed Gromeo! This is a good, I don't think we're able to do this very well, friends. I didn't save in Rockland, did I? Oh, we might have to redo part of the game. Well, we'll see how it is. Uh, heal. Heal yourself. Uh, you're in the front row now, aren't you? Um. You're unbalanced, so you can heal. Actually, you know what? You can heal, because you're on balance, so you can't fight. And you're gonna heal yourself. Yeah. You gotta be aware of, like, who's... Is it, Nick? I don't remember. Is this that battle? I don't remember if this is that battle. Oh, here we go, okay. This is that battle. All right, I wasn't sure. All right. This guy's a real hero. Grammy was like, I will sacrifice myself to protect you. That's a good idea in the second fight in the game. Ted is kind of an idiot. I, I I wasn't sure Blue Glass. I thought it was a little later than this. I didn't think it. This is such a dumb place because Ted is an idiot. Aww. You poor dumb child. I love you, Ted.
<laughs> yeah, Ted. Oh no. <laughs> I should maybe heal, heal my party. Unfortunately, Gremio is dead. Is, is Ted a 1995 name? Did I do that wrong? I did, didn't I? Oh well. I want to bring Romeo back, but I can't because he's dead. Oh, can I use medicine? On oh man, I love this song. Does medicine bring them back from the dead? That would be so convenient. I oh, thank you. <laughs> Shows that I know. Let's save. Well, I used all of my magic on that, but that's fine. Yeah, so Ted is a dummy. I love him, but he's a dummy. Why is it going blue again? Save crystal. The memory card. It's a good thing I didn't save earlier. It's a good thing I can save now. Probably make a save state too, just because I don't know if I trust my virtual memory cards. Hey! Sidonia and Varkas? Yes. So the original, original story of the water margin that Suicoden is super loosely inspired by, like, has the bandits against an empire sort of set up. So having bandits be a, an early issue in the world is, a, I think, a little nod to that. Big, long, fancy titles going on. You, you tax thieves. <laughs> You petty clerk. Like, that's just such a great insult. Heh. <laughs> Sorry. Zidonia says heh a lot. <laughs> See? Uh... <laughs> Affable fellow. I just... It's very good. I appreciate the writing in this game. I was like, God, guys, knock it off. Does Kanan have like a hat over his butt? Oh no. <sighs> These guys are serious. Oh no, whatever whatever will we do? I think we might have to fight some bandits. Oh no, those guys have bows and arrows. I don't know if that's allowed. but whatever. I love McDole's little pointy shoes. Sorry, he's McDole to me. He's gonna be McDole. I'm just gonna have to get used to the fact that he's McDole. <laughs> See what I mean? Heh. <laughs> That's what he says. Alright. Probably wanna hit Varkas first. Although I don't know actually. Zidonia is the distance person, so he might hit my back row. Which wouldn't be very good. Take down one of them before they can unite against me. Oh, you're doing so much damage. Go away. Stop doing so much damage. Ah. Uh. No! I said stop doing so much damage, and you're still doing so much damage! 
How dare! Okay, I can still take one more hit from them, so I'm gonna do that. Oh, shoot. Yeah! Yeah, look at all these critical attacks! Yes! Go party, go! Oh, hey, look at that. I got a level. Very nice. And some monies that I will use to buy more clothes. Pawn's like, I will punch you so much. This is so much, so much more fun than sitting at home. Cleo is not impressed. No, I want to... Well. I'm not in control of this. <laughs> uh-huh. Do we want to go back up there and see if there's anything in their fortress? Is there anything in their fortress? <gasps> Sophie! <gasps> Sophie, 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 yeah. What do you think you see, baby cow? What do you see out the window? <gasps> She's such a cutie. That is not the key change that I am used to, so I might have done that wrong, actually. My cover of it. All right, let's go back to Rockland. All right, well, I guess if I can't get in, then why bother trying? Listen to the soundtrack so many times that things are just gonna things are just gonna pop out without me thinking. <laughs> Boris Imperial. Haha, <laughs> that's funny. slow but we got it it's one of my favorite soundtracks it's so good all right well let's oh no what's going on here because by the way this was a child that we were talking to earlier do you remember i mean in my opinion there's not really any question we gotta beat these jerks up I'm gonna beat you guys up. Look how much health Pawn has. You should run away from Pawn. All right, take out the one who's got a crossbow. That seems like a good idea. Everybody else go after the spear fella. No, that's unacceptable. Yes, that's, that is acceptable though. Yeah, take that. Bam, oh no. All right, everybody, just like beat this dude up a little bit, rough him up. Han is a beefy boy, but not as much as Humphrey. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. I don't mean to make the jokes that make you feel excluded. Hello, child. Do you remember that line? <laughs> yeah. So. Beginning to think that the Imperial soldiers might not be the good guys. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> 
See, like, this whole, this whole narrative here, the fact that the two Imperial soldier, like, corrupt dudes are, like, speaking, they're, they're using the same narrative, they're bouncing off of each other, um, and just ignoring everybody else who's like, that is such garbage. This whole thing is garbage. So there's a little bit of comedy there, but it's not a comedic situation. It's just like, they're just like so awful. Ah, okay. So we're gonna go back to Gregminster, report back. I'm sure everything's gonna be fine. You know, dad's gonna be fine. He's gonna put down the rebellion. He'll be safe. We're going to report what happened to the Emperor and he's going to be like, Oh gosh, that's dreadful. Thank you so much for helping me make my empire a more wholesome and good place. And then everything's going to be fine and dandy, right? I mean, that seems likely, right? Right? That's, that's what we got going on here. Pretty sure. Oh man. Pawn is so mad about this. It is interesting. I never even really thought about that. Like, this is like your assignment, and yet it's your entourage that comes with you, you know? Which fits the world. Like, it feels plausible to me. Ted is like, oh, yes, dinner. That, I'm sure this is no big deal. Sure, nothing weird is happening here. <sighs> you precious idiot. I love you, Ted. I, I like I really loved Ted as a kid playing this game for the first time. I related to the obnoxious children, I suppose. folks have never seen Sweet Godin before or played it so you don't know what's about to happen you don't know why we're all calling Ted an idiot oh man I'm sorry is it is it is it frustrating look at this look look at how small our little team is now See, so this, I appreciate that this game is kind of like, it is, uh, it is, uh, you've been traveling, you've been on the road. It's not just that you, you like, took a step and hopped over there. It's like, oh, you were traveling, you ate tr trail food, you've probably been out and about for, like, a few weeks. Um, <laughs> Pawn likes food. <laughs> Relatable. Cameo. the signal that I can walk around. Oh yeah, no, Ted is a character in the game. <laughs> We're not gonna hit on Cleo because that would be inappropriate. Okay, well, Cleo. I mean... There's crummy people out there. So presumably then everybody in the McDole household has had a history working in the military. No, Pawn is not the biggest brain of the family. <laughs> I'm sure it's nothing. I'm sure everything's fine, right? Everything's okay. What could possibly go wrong? Ted just went to talk to the Emperor or something like that, or, or you know, it's all good. There's nobody to distrust in 
in the capital. There's nothing suspicious happening. not dead yet. He's just badly wounded. Obviously, I'm going to help. And again, I want to remind you all that Ted is, in fact, a literal child. He's like 15. I mean... Attacked by thugs. Magic wound. Yeah, because like you can imagine like he's like like panicking. He's frantically. That's why like Carmi is like calm down. He's like, where where are they? Are they here? Are they here? What's going on? Khan is not the wisest person. It's like, did, did he do something wrong? <laughs> it's like, um, no. Pawn! Pawn is kind of dumb. I would never get into trouble. Just a little trouble, not big trouble. Oh man, I had forgotten about that until this moment. about the Suicoden games is that the people in them are like human beings instead of like characters in a larger than life story. So they're idiots sometimes. It might be Jan, I don't know. This is something that uh, means a lot more when you uh, know the story. It hits really hard understanding what exactly Ted is asking of him. These will become clear. I can explain this to you if you want, but uh, the 27 true runes are a very very, 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 very big deal in the Suikoden universe. They're kind of almost at a god level, like the 27 true runes created the world. 
Because it's three times three times three. And three is a m magical or holy number in a lot of cultures. So it's lots of things. Yeah, the true runes, whew. Uh, you don't really get a strong sense of the true runes. You get a little bit here, but by the time you get to swing it in three, uh, yeah. The cursed rune. I think of all of the true runes, I think the Soul Eater is the worst to have. They make you immortal while you have them on, by the way. So. Or at least you don't, you don't age and die. Yes, that was a really stupid decision, Ted. But he kind of like like you can kind of get the impression like Ted like let his guard down. Here he is like with a family he could be like calm and relaxed and he's in a safe spot. And then like everyone that he loves is there and they're all gonna die. He's like, no, I've got this. It'll be fine. <laughs> Cause he's still a dummy. Yes. So so remember what I say about um, of all the true runes to have, I think the Soul Leader is the worst. Um, and Ted is asking his best friend to do something that will be, that he knows will be absolutely terrible for his friend. But it's very important that it be done. And McDowell has no idea what he's being asked to sacrifice at this point. I don't even know if Ted knows fully at this point. He just knows that this room needs to not get in bad hands. main character has the soul eater one of the 27 true runes that created the world <sighs> Claire's gonna take care of business an idiot, but Pawn is a bigger idiot. No, this game is not copying Final Fantasy's soundtrack. <laughs> no, if anything, if they're draw they may be drawing inspiration from a similar classical piece. Um, but no, they're not ripping off another game's soundtrack. Pawn, you made a poor decision. I don't know that it would make much difference. Do we continue pushing it? Or do we eventually say all right? I do like that the no in this case is interpreted as I won't let you do this. <sighs> yep. 
Yeah. Okay, so now he's looping. But yeah, I just I love the answers that he gives. Hi, Evil Hag. Thanks. Yeah. So I was wondering if I was gonna cry <laughs> during this recording. <week. laughs> We're at the very beginning of the game, and I've already cried twice. So, um, yeah. So you understand at this point that what you are doing here is so important that Ted is like, I will die to get this away from them. I c like, there's no way, you know? Probably ought to have bought new gear, but whatever, that's fine. And this was at the time that this game came out, like, for me at least, really engrossing. Yeah, and you're like, my friend is going to die. What? And you ask yourself, what is so important about this that Ted is going to die? He's willing to die that he's like, please let me die to save the, you because you have to get this away from her. Fortunately, we're going to have a little moment. <sighs> yeah, Marie is very sweet. Yeah. Oh, right. I remember how you get out of Gregminster, I think. Oh, man. It's one of everyone's favorite characters. <laughs> right? Maybe not. Let me see if he's downstairs. I thought he, I thought that this is where he comes in. I might be wrong. All right. So those of you who haven't experienced the Speak in game, what do you think so far? Like, are you kind of getting a sense for why I like it so much? Yes, 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 yes. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> Everybody loves Victor. <laughs> Is there anyone who doesn't like Victor? He doesn't have to be your number one favorite character. But is there anyone who doesn't love him? <laughs> Do any of you who play this game actually not like Victor? Oh my god. But yes, you don't know who he is yet. You'll find out. You'll probably like, okay, next. <laughs> Neckler probably doesn't like him, no, that's fair. Uh... Oh man, I don't even remember his rune. But we should, we should, we should, we should keep mom about things that happen in later games in the series that might relate to characters. Oh wow, you don't like Victor as a character? <sighs> okay, I loved him. I will say, Evil Hag, have you played the rest of the series? Because that might affect things. So this isn't so good. <laughs> oh no, they think I was a rebel. I'm <laughs> looking out all night. Alright, Victor Buddy. Okay. Oh 
Um, I think I know how to progress this. Okay, so I guess we're just gonna have to try to exit. You should absolutely... Probably not yell at this guy. Yanapi, you should play the second one. It is so good. Oh no, evil hag! Okay, well, I'm gonna be playing through at least the first two games in the series, and I will be getting a recruitment pack for them because. I will not let Leon Silverberg wreck my good ending. <laughs> and then the second game also is tricky. I don't remember who is... It's always like, it's so often Leon in this game. Um, but I'm trying to remember who it is in 2. <laughs> but there's a couple of characters. Romeo keeps being like, I will save you! <laughs> Romeo is a good mom. Be so loyal to the Emperor. That guy. Uh... Oh, Victor! I've made I've made Victor's costume for a friend. Uh, we went as Odessa, Flick, and Victor for uh, Halloween at an anime convention. a long, long time ago. When I had long hair, in fact. The rebel. <laughs> we are not rebels! See what he says if we're not sure we can trust him. <laughs> I was like, no. And Richard was like, come on, child. Okay, fine. How, how many characters have I? I've, I've, I've gone as, as McDole, um, but that was like kind of like a casual closet cosplay that was a joke. I've dressed as Odessa. My sister has cosplayed a lot of Suikoden characters. Like a lot of Suikoden characters. Yeah, no, we won't quite get their blue glass. Big deal, just meet someone. Small request, not a big deal. Alright, let's go for it. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba -da. We're gonna have to save though and shut down for the night. Oh, nope. Okay, we don't get to save there. Shut down for the night. Oh, we'll just go talk to them. No big deal. Give them some money. Bribery never hurt anybody. <laughs> so here's an assessment of the situation that we're in, which doesn't, based on what we've seen, seem that inaccurate. Like, so the thing with Victor is he is very definitely rough around the edges. Very definitely rough around the edges in the way that he interacts with things, but he has an incredibly good heart that you will get to see over the course of the game. Um.
Hi, cat. Okay, hold on. Some. Oh, I don't. I don't have the map yet. Oh no. I have to get Templeton. <laughs> Templeton's from one, right? Oh, I've only got four members of my party <laughs> because. Oh, oh, why is Victor in the back row? Oh my God, Lauren, he needs to not be in the back row. We're gonna fix that. Uh, Victor, why are you in the back row? <laughs> Let's change that. Okay. Um, so if you'll take a look at this, by the way, um, if you see the L and the S. Um, and the M. Medium characters can go in either row and do damage. S, that's short, they can only attack from the front row. And long range characters can only attack, or should only attack from the back row, or can attack from the back row, rather. Alright. I mean, I guess, of course, the scene with Cut has to be early. I just forgot it was that early. Yeah, let's just kill the boar. Oh no, Victor, you're supposed to be showing us what you can do swinging that big old sword of yours. I think the sprites are really detailed and impressive. Especially given the, uh, the age of the game. But I like the 2D, 3D merge that they're trying to do. It's tricky. Um, but... All right, Lennon camp. All right. Oh. oh, is this there? Are we gonna, no. Kayaki in. Oh, did I forget to take stuff off? I forgot to take stuff off both, both Pawn and Ted. Well, that's fine. <laughs> we don't need money or gear anyway. Not from hereabouts. Oh, is this where Meg is from? Oh, can you actually get a C for bringing Meg here? Oh man, Meg. Meg is a character in the game. As <laughs> you might be able to tell from that dialogue and what I said. <laughs> oh my god. It's another opportunity for flute. Hello. probably get some new gear. I will get some gear. Uh, you're carrying too much. Oh, is there is there a blacksmith here? Okay, angry nerd bird. Just the beginning of this game and crying a little bit. You know. You know how it goes. Um. This leather coat. Okay, we're gonna sell that. Great. So I hate the item system in this game, and so does literally everyone else. Uh, so that means that this does nobody any good. Nope, we're gonna get rid of those. 
yes, we'll be ending shortly. I just want to um, finish a little bit of inventory management here. Cleo can wear two circlets on her head if she wants to. Um, I just, I want to get another suit of armor. For you. Oh. Okay, fine. Wait, 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 wait. Let me do this. Okay, give this to Cleo. Okay. So yeah, inventory management quickly becomes a nightmare. That's just how it is. We all hate it. Let's give her that too. Okay, excellent. Everybody's got armor. Okay, we're gonna equip that. Probably gonna regret some of this that I'm selling, but I'm selling it anyway. Okay, so we have some gear. Yeah, I'm not sure that was worth the cost either, but we did it anyway. There's the inn where we will save. Oh, there's a blacksmith! Just to show you folks how, um, I was gonna chew through my money, how uh, getting your armor or your, 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 your attack up goes. We're going to sharpen our weapon. Yes, and it eventually costs a lot of money. So you really only have like one, one weapon and you just drop all of your money into it and the name will change eventually with some of them so we're just gonna do that sure all right so you can you can see how like your money quickly just evaporates imagine doing that with like anybody you stick in your party all right so we're slightly more powerful now than we were and we're gonna go save and then uh, next week we will pick up. We're gonna save the game. Yes, it does make a big difference with your damage output. Um, because again, you can't like level up. So you grind for money so that you can sharpen your weapon again. So. All right, let me save. Oh, uh, how do I? File, save state, slot one. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me, folks. Um, I appreciate you hanging out. We're gonna go through this for, uh, we'll go, th go through this for like another week, then we'll have a little Undertale break. Um, but yeah, we're gonna get through Suikoden. Um, I hope you enjoy it. It gets really, really, really good and places and if you think this is good um and gets you in the gut just wait until you see the second game so thank you so much and for the i know we've had some new sweet and friends drop by thank you for joining us it's one of my favorite games of all time um i will try to be a little bit more full of interesting information and stuff but if you want to bring information about sweet code and too um or sweet code and also also, excuse me, um, feel free to drop by and, 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 and bestow knowledge upon us. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. I hope you wind up enjoying this game. I know I do. Um, and it's fun to kind of remember how it goes. <laughs> um, we'll be picking up with more Wander Song on Thursday, and we will be back with this next Tuesday. So I will see you later. <laughs> Bye.